That's a moment. Mr. Vice President, members of Congress, my fellow Americans. We are 15 years into this new century, 15 years that dawned with terror touching our shores, that unfolded with a new generation fighting two long and costly wars, that saw a vicious recession spread across our nation and the world. It has been, and still is, a hard time for many. But tonight, we turn the page. Tonight, after a breakthrough year for America, our economy is growing and creating jobs at the fastest pace since 1999. Employment rate is now lower than it was before the financial crisis. More of our kids are graduating than ever before. More of our people are insured than ever before. as free from the grip of foreign oil as we've been in almost 30 years. Tonight, for the first time since 9-11, our combat mission in Afghanistan is over. Six years ago, nearly 180,000 American troops served in Iraq and Afghanistan. Today, fewer than 15,000 remain. And we salute the courage and sacrifice of every man and woman in this 9-11 generation who has served to keep us safe. We are humbled and grateful for your service. America, for all that we have endured, for all the grit and hard work required to come back, for all the tasks that lie ahead, know this. The shadow of crisis has passed, and the State of the Union is strong. At this moment, with a growing economy, shrinking deficits, bustling industry, booming energy production, we have risen from recession freer to write our own future than any other nation on Earth. It's now up to us to choose who we want to be over the next 15 years and for decades to come. Will we accept an economy where only a few of us do spectacularly well? Or will we commit ourselves to an economy that generates rising incomes and chances for everyone who makes the effort? Will we approach the world fearful and reactive, dragged into costly conflicts that strain our military and set back our standing? Or will we lead wisely? using all elements of our power to defeat new threats and protect our planet? Will we allow ourselves to be sorted into factions and turned against one another? Or will we recapture the sense of common purpose that has always propelled America forward? In two weeks, I will send this Congress a budget filled with ideas that are practical, not partisan, and in the months ahead, I'll crisscross the country making a case 
for those ideas. So tonight, I want to focus less on a checklist of proposals and focus more on the values at stake in the choices before us.